All right, so now we, we have access to our repo. We can push changes if we want to. Um, but before we do that, let's go ahead and set up our toolchain integration with um, the repository and our DevOps pipeline so we can actually have that automated build and deploy process. So to do that, we're going to go to IBM Cloud in a new tab. Um, so from IBM Cloud, you can go to the top left, the menu icon, and look for DevOps on the left side. So this will bring you to the toolchains uh, page where you can see any existing toolchains. Um, however, make sure that you're in the correct uh, location, uh, whichever location makes sense to you. For me, uh, the closest is Dallas. And if you don't have any existing toolchains and you want to learn more, you can go to the Getting Started tab on the left side. And uh, here you can learn more about the whole continuous delivery process and uh, all the different tool integrations available through our toolchains and a little bit more about each tool. So I'm going to go back to the toolchains tab and I'm going to create a new toolchain. So on this page you have some template toolchains um, where it gives you a good starting point for uh, creating different applications and these will create a repo for you with a sample application um, just to show you how the process is done. However, since we're starting with an existing Git repo. Um, we're going to have to go to the build your own toolchain um, icon at the very bottom, this uh, entry under other templates. It does say for advanced users. However, y'all are really smart, and I believe in y'all. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so now in the build your own toolchain um, page, we're just going to give our toolchain a name. Make sure your region is correct. Mine is Dallas. Um, resource group, I'll leave it as default, and we'll just create it. And there you have it, you have a tool chain. So it's pretty empty right now. So let's go ahead and add some tools. So you can click on the Add a Tool button on the right side. And you can see here a catalog of different tool integrations available for your tool chain. Um, there's only three that we're really gonna use. Um, let's get started with the Git repos and issue tracking. And so this um, does, as it pretty much says, it's going to allow integration with the Git repo we just created. So under repository type, uh, click on the drop down and select existing. And then now we're going to want to go back to our Git repo and let's go ahead and copy that address. Let's paste that in there. Um, when you have enable issues selected, that just allows for um, issue tracking on your repo. Um, and uh, you also want to make sure to check the track deployment of code changes. That's what's going to allow the automatic um, kickoff of the build and deploy pipeline. So if that's selected, go to create an integration. And so now we have our Git repo integrated to our tool chain. We're going to add some more tools, such as the delivery pipeline. Give it a name and create integration. One more time, we're gonna add another tool. And this time it's the Eclipse Orion Web IDE. And as I mentioned before, this is just a browser-based IDE for modifying your code. Um, very easy to use, very easy to just jump in and make simple changes. And so now we have all of our tools integrated. So let's go ahead and jump into the delivery pipeline where we're going to configure our CI CD process. So the uh, so you're given a blank slate here so you can build out your pipeline however you'd like. Let's go ahead and add a stage. So these pipelines are, they're comprised of different stages. Um, the first stage uh, is usually the build stage. And this is where you can pull in any dependencies and do any um, any uh, like static code analysis on your um, on your code. Um, so this is just going to pull in that Git repo that we created. And uh, if you have multiple branches, you can select a branch here. And uh, in this case, we only have master. Um, ensure that the stage trigger is uh, run jobs whenever a change is pushed to Git. So this will kick off automatically. And uh, then click on the jobs tab at the top. 
so each stage can have multiple jobs. Um, so for example, you can have a um, you can have a build job with a test job right after it. Um, however, in this case, all we're going to do is create one build um, job. So the job, we can leave it named as builds. And there are different builder types depending on the application that you're trying to build. Um, so there's a list of different builder types. And if you click on the little information icon above the dropdown, you can see a little more information about what each builder type is. Um, However, for, uh, uh, for the purposes of this demo, we're just going to be sticking with simple. As you can see, thanks to the tooltip here, the uh, simple builder just packages the files and gets it ready for deployment. All right, and with that configured, we can go ahead and save it. And now we have our build stage. So let's go ahead and add a deploy stage to actually um, get this app deployed to the platform. So clicking add stage again. We'll name this one deploy. Uh, so the input type is going to be the build artifact from the previous stage. Um, just the uh, and this just points to the the stage you want to get your inputs from and the job. So we're going to leave that as default for the build stage and the build job. And the stage trigger is uh, make sure it's run jobs when previous stage uh, is completed. So whenever the um, build is completed, then this stage will automatically kick off. So let's go to the jobs tab again, and this time we're going to select the deploy job. So deployer type we'll leave as Cloud Foundry, region, US South. So now API key, we're gonna have to do some configuration. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on manage at the top, security, platform, and API keys. And I'm just going to open that in a new tab. So from here, you can create new API keys. So I'm going to just give this one a name and create. Just like with the access token, you'll only be able to see the key once and you won't be able to retrieve it again. So make sure you do save this in a Word doc or something so that you can reference it later. Um, and just like with the access token, I'll be deleting these after the video, so don't you try to steal my credentials. I'm kidding, of course, but I saved that for later, and now I can go back to the deploy stage. Um, I'm going to click on the drop down again, enter an existing API key, and then I'll just paste that in. So I'll go ahead and save that. And uh, make sure your organization is the correct organization. Um, your, and then you can select a Cloud Foundry space. I'll leave mine at dev. All right, application name. This is important. So there's a file in your, um, in your repo called the manifest.yml, and that's where you have a lot of deployment uh, configuration uh, variables, such as application name. If you define the application name in this stage here, this will overwrite what's in that file. So we're going to go ahead and delete this here, as we don't want to overwrite what's in the manifest.yml file. We actually want our configuration to stay there. Uh, next, we have a deploy script. So if you want to do anything else before you actually deploy your application, if there's any other scripts you need to run or any tests you need to run, you can you can uh, choose to do that here. Uh, I'm just going to leave this as it is, and then I'm going to save. All right, so we have two stages now, our build and deploy stage. Um, so to actually kick off this pipeline, uh, we just need to push our code. Um, but we don't have any code right now. That's kind of an issue. So... I've went ahead and found us a good candidate sample application.